Hello YouTube, Bane666 here. So today I've got a treat for you. Um, we are going to have a lesson in economics by one of the leading experts in economics in the world. Uh, you may know him as a member of the Young Turks. That's right, I'm talking about Hassan Piker. Billionaires are not the problem. I never got a job in my whole life and I started washing dishes at 12 from a poor person. So but billionaire is a bad word now. Can't make money. Is there something wrong with becoming a successful billionaire like Bill Gates? Is there anything wrong with that? Yes. Listen, I'm a simple guy, okay? And I'm not a very smart guy either. But even from where I'm standing, nothing says the system is absolutely broken like the existence of billionaires. I mean, that level of wealth hoarding is no different than being a king, except, well, it's under capitalism. Under monarchies, you had God justifying the king's power and the army violently upholding that power. And under capitalism, we have meritocracy to thank for Jeff Bezos and people like him and the police force to make sure no one questions anything. Now, some of you may be scratching your head going, what are you talking about, Bain? Hassan Piker's not an expert in economics. He's, he's just some idiot who got a job on the Young Turks because his uncle is the founder of the Young Turks. And I'm not a very smart guy either. And, and you'd be wrong. You would actually be wrong. And I'm going to show you a video of Hassan Piker doing an interview with Jesse Lee Peterson where Hassan Piker tells us his advanced theory of bread economics uh, and it's so advanced it is so incredibly advanced that lay people like yourself and myself and even many economic experts and for the record I don't claim to be an expert on economics but even economic experts would find it baffling and I'm not a very smart guy either now some of you may be thinking that's because it's an incoherent mess um, but I, I say no I choose to look at it another way I think it's so advanced that it's beyond the the scope of everyone else to understand in probably including Hassan Piker himself but that's beside the point so I thought we would go through this interview with Jesse Lee Peterson and we would look at Hassan Piker's advanced theory on bread economics and we'll break it down bit by bit in an attempt for us, you know, uh, less intelligent beings to fully understand it and comprehend its complexities. It's going to be a bit of a challenge because, like I said, it's, it's far beyond uh, my meager brain as I assume it's um, far beyond yours too. Um, and that, that's not saying that we're stupid. It's just that Obviously, Hassan Piker is just so extremely intelligent, so advanced, uh, that he's just beyond the normal people like us. Now, I, I thought I would play some music during this next segment of the video, just some appropriate music, so maybe something like this. Uh, no, actually, I, I don't think that's appropriate. Um... What about something like this? Nah, that that really doesn't capture it either. Um, all right, let's let's give it one more try. Yeah, I I think that's perfect for what we're about to listen to. Wait, can can we can I yes, can we just play sure a, a thought experiment? Okay, let's say that you make fifteen loaves of bread. Okay. You're making 15 loaves of bread. Okay, so far so good. We we have a baker who I assume owns his own business and he's making 15 loaves of bread. Okay, so far I, I understand it. Next. Then you hire someone and that person also has the capacity to make bread and uh, together you guys start making 20 loaves of bread. Uh, and, and Okay, so the, the baker hires an employee uh, and they start making 20 loaves of bread together. So the baker's making 15 and the new employee is making 5. So we can, I guess we can assume that maybe the new employee hasn't much experience as a baker because he's not making the same amount of bread as the, the baker. Maybe he's being trained by the baker. 
or maybe he's lazy, who knows. Uh, by all means, uh, continue, Hassan. And you're like, well, okay, I'm gonna take 15 loaves of bread for myself and give this person five loaves of bread as a, a payment. The, the baker's paying his employees in bread. Okay, now see, this is where the advanced theory of bread economics really gets confusing to a person like myself because it, it seems to have done away with normal currency and has replaced it with uh, loaves of bread. Um, but there's another complexity here too, you see. The baker has hired this person to make bread for him. And this person has gone to the baker's bakery, which I assume the baker is either renting the property or uh, possibly paying back a loan to the bank. The baker has purchased all the equipment, which would be quite expensive, and also has to maintain that equipment, uh, which would also cost money. The baker's also bought all the ingredients for the bread. I assume the employee hasn't brought his own ingredients from home, so he would be using the baker's ingredients as well. Uh, and the baker also has to pay things like insurance. He has to uh, do all the paperwork for, you know, government health codes and, and all that other stuff, which takes a lot of time and effort, right? Um, and then the employee turns up, he makes five loaves of bread for the baker, and the baker then gives him those five loaves of bread as payment. See, this is, this is why this is too advanced for lay people like myself, because it, it seems like the baker isn't really getting anything out of the deal. In fact, he's losing something because he's, he's lost time and wearing his equipment and the cost of the ingredients and, and everything else that goes with it and gained absolutely nothing. Um, I don't know, it's, it's a strange system of economics when you think about it. But I'm, I'm sure Hassan's going to explain all that because, you know, he's, uh, he's so advanced. Okay, so now your, your output is 20 loaves of bread and the other person is getting 5 loaves of bread while you're getting 15 still. Then another undocumented person comes in. Illegal alien? Yeah, illegal alien, sure. And all of a sudden, uh, that person is working as well with your uh, company, and now... I don't hire illegals. Okay, hold on, not yours <laughs> specifically. I'm just saying, this is a thought experiment. We're not uh, making loaves of bread, and that's not the kind of payment anyway. Go ahead. Um, so let's say now, um, because of that, because of, there's an additional person, now you can pay the other, uh, the, the original employee three loaves of bread, because you can pay the undocumented person two loaves of bread because the undocumented person doesn't have all of the rights that a uh, that a legal citizen would have. The undocumented person doesn't have all the legal rights that a normal person would have. Y you mean the the right to be paid in bread? I, I don't know how legal that is, Hassan, but look, you're the expert, you know more about economics than I do, so you know, you, you're probably right. Uh, there probably are bakers out there paying their employees in bread because, um, I mean, what do I know, right? But but now we have a second employee. Uh, how many loaves of bread is he making? We we don't know. Is are they? Is he making five loaves of bread? Are they now up to twenty-five, or are they still on twenty? You you haven't told us. But for some reason, the the payment has dropped. And, uh, you know, this is fair. Uh, if, if they're making 25 loaves of bread, then this is fair because um, the employer has to, the baker has to make a profit as well. And considering he's supplying all those things that I mentioned previously, like, you know, the equipment and the ingredients, then I, I think it's only fair that he has some of the productivity of uh, his employees, right? That, that is if they're making 25 loaves of bread now. If, if they're still making 20 loaves of bread, then that would mean the productivity of the first employee has dropped from five loaves to three. See, this is just too advanced for someone like me. It's, it's just confusing. So you can justify paying them less. 
and then you can justify paying less to your original employee because there are plenty of people who take their job, right? You're like, well, you know what? If you want to keep, uh, if you want to keep at least any loaves of bread and, and, and feed your family, you're going to have to take less money now. Take less money now? So, so the employer is paying them not only in bread, but in money as well even though he's supplying all the ingredients and equipment and, and getting nothing out of it. Such a, such a strange system of economics. But continue, Hassan. Okay. Now, you look at that and you say, hold on, why don't we, uh, why don't we just uh, you know, eliminate the undocumented person and get five while uh, the, the boss still gets 15 loaves of bread? Because I was getting five last year, and that was better than three. And you're right. That is better. Five loaves of bread is better than three. However... Yeah, I, I still don't get what the boss is getting out of it. Uh, now, that clearly it's because I, I'm just not an expert in economics. But it seems like the boss is supplying everything, and the employee is turning up and making his bread and then leaving with it. And, and the boss really doesn't get anything out of the deal it's 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 such a strange system of economics so advanced it's just beyond anything i think which has ever been put forward before um i'm, I'm sure it would work otherwise hassan wouldn't wouldn't be proposing it but continue hassan this is fascinating what i advocate for is uh, taking away uh from the boss 15 loaves of bread, ha helping him have 10 loaves of bread, and then taking the rest of the 10 loaves of bread and distributing it evenly amongst the other employees. So, Okay, now that was really advanced. That was the, uh, the core tenets of uh, the bread theory of economics right there. So I think we need to go through it again a little bit slower and break it down step by step, just so we can really understand it. What I advocate for is uh, taking away uh, from the boss 15 loaves of bread. Okay, so the boss has 25 loaves of bread, 15 produced by himself, five from each employee. And Hassan wants to take away 15 of that 25, even though the boss has produced 15 himself. Ha helping him have 10 loaves of bread and then taking the rest of the 10 loaves of bread and distributing it evenly amongst the other employees. So Evenly. Okay, so they would get seven and a half loaves of bread each, e even though they only produced five. So they would actually be getting paid more than what they produced. Um, so for a layman like myself, that doesn't seem sustainable. But uh, go on, uh, Hassan, e explain it to us. So all of a sudden, you have seven or you have eight, and your uh, new friend, who is the undocumented citizen who came in, has seven. Oh, so, hold on, the, the first employee gets eight, and the second one gets seven. They, they don't get seven and a half each. Uh, so I'm, I'm confused, because I thought evenly um, actually meant evenly, but apparently it doesn't. So I'm learning. I'm learning new stuff about economics all the time. Continue, Hassan. Is that a question? No. This is a. This is. This is the difference between your outlook and mine. <laughs> Whereas I think that the people at the top have a lot, do, and they have a lot so to do give I, back. Do I own the? Oh, I think I'm finally starting to understand the bread theory of uh, economics. Yes, it's, it's complex, but I think I'm getting my head around it. So the employer has to pay for all the overhead, right? He has to pay for the property, whether it be rent or paying off the bank. He has to pay for things like electricity and insurance. He has to pay for all the equipment and all the upkeep of the equipment. He has to pay for all the ingredients. And on top of that, he also produces 15 loaves of bread. Now, all the employees have to do is turn up and produce five loaves of bread and they in turn get paid from the productivity of the the baker the owner the employer he has to give them a share of 
here's productivity. So they leave being far ahead of of what they contributed, right? They contributed five loaves, they leave with eight and seven, and he ends up massively in debt for all the overheads, plus you know his generosity of just giving away his own productivity. Um, yeah, I, I guess that seems sustainable. I, I think that would probably work on a mass scale. Uh, I'm, I'm sure businesses wouldn't be going going under left, right, and centre if we were doing that. I'm I'm sure it it would increase employment, maybe. See, I'm I'm just a layman. I don't understand these things like Hassan does. He's so much more advanced than we are. Company? Yes. And I'm in business to make what? Loaves of bread, let's say. I rest my case. Y exactly. The owner should have well, you're more. Still, no, but because that's why he's the owner. I know. So, like I said, I'm I'm not an, an economic expert, but I, I do have a question for Hassan if he ever watches this. Uh, in his first example, when the boss was working by himself, he was producing 15 loaves of bread, and he um, he ended up with 15 loaves of bread. But now that he's employed two employees he's only getting 10 loaves of bread. So I guess my question would be, and once again, I'm a layman, not an expert at all. So I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation uh, for this. But my question is, why the fuck would he hire employees? <laughs> if his productivity at the end of the day is down five loaves of bread, why would he go to all the hassle of hiring additional employees. See, that just that just doesn't make sense, does it, Hassan? No, but if you were alone, if you were alone, you would not be able to increase your productivity. You would not be able to create more loaves of bread. That's why. But Hassan, uh, using your own words and your own examples, the the employer would be down five loaves of bread by hiring additional employees which which doesn't make a lot of sense i'm starting to doubt that you're the expert that i've been led to believe you are hassan hmm i hire someone exactly but they don't when have to work for someone, me if they don't want to i know but where would they, they go are the they ones would go to another would, they would go to another they, factory where they would have the same conditions. no i would call the police and tell them that they, i have an illegal that, alien here and that is you capitalism you're right that is exactly that is exactly <laughs> the problem no they have no business in my company or in my country <laughs> okay. and so i would call the police okay uh now that we've explored that and we've seen that hassan piker is actually an expert on economics and he knows what he's talking about he's not just some guy who was hired by his uncle because that's the only way he could get a job no 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 this is a guy who obviously knows exactly what he's talking about and now he's going to explain to us how uh, communism is better than um capitalism and how uh billionaires are all bad the point is, is he earned it. They became a billionaire by creating a product or a great service that benefits everybody. And we know it benefits us because we pay for it. No. And all jokes aside, they don't deserve it. I'm not going to get into how profit is exploitation or the labor theory of value. What I'm simply going to say is that wealth is never created in isolation. Every billionaire and millionaire created their wealth with workers who make infinitely less than they do. And we're conditioned into thinking that this is the natural order of the universe. Uh, yes, Hassan. Um, workers make less than their bosses, right? Because... Uh, the owner of the company is the one who's taking all the financial risk. They're, especially in the case of small businesses, right? They're, they're often got massive overheads and they're in debt to the bank. And they have all the risk and the responsibility. So, yes, they, they should get more of the profit at the end of the day. As opposed to a worker who turns up and just does, you know, his seven and a half hours or whatever and then goes home with none of the responsibility or financial risk. So you, you're comparing apples and oranges here, aren't you? 
Now, you may say, but Bain, what about the big multinationals? Surely they're on a different scale than, you know, a, a small family-run business or whatever. And that's that's true. But Hassan doesn't distinguish between the two, right? He's just, he's talking generally. But even if it's a big multinational which is making millions and has no debt or whatever, and the bosses are still being paid more, yes, that's because... They've spent years working their way up the corporate ladder. They've earned their way up to that position with hard work over many years. You know, unlike some people who get a job from their uncle, because that's the only way they can get employed. Right, Hassan? But if they have more experience and and more skills and they've been there longer and they've worked their way up the corporate ladder, then why shouldn't they be getting paid more? And one of the outcomes of this mentality is the justification for extreme wealth inequality. We live in the richest nation on earth, the richest nation to have ever existed, and people struggle to pay their bills and suffer when they can't get medical treatment. What? Now, this is a fair point. Uh, personally, I'm in favor of universal health care. Now, I know a lot of my American viewers will disagree with me on that, and that's fine. Uh, America is very different culturally when it comes to universal health care than, say, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, the UK and Europe. They have very, very different opinions. And look, that's fine if, if that's what they want. Personally, though, I'm glad I live in a country which has universal health care. Not that it's a perfect system, but at least uh, everyone can get a level of health care if they need it good is GDP growth when you have homeless people dying on the streets in a country where there's an abundance of empty houses or when you have to beg on the internet to get life-saving medical treatments. But I uh, yes, there are a lot of homeless men, aren't there, Hassan? The majority of those homeless you're talking about just so happen to be men. Uh, I suspect that society's attitude towards them would be very different if it was 80% of the homeless who were female, right? Uh, but I guess that's a topic for another day, right, Hassan? I do think a system that allows billionaires to exist when there are parts of Alabama where, where people are still getting ringworm because they don't have access to public health is wrong. But of course, if you listen to the bootlickers over at Fox News, this is their defense. Well, first of all, I mean, the fact is ringworm isn't deadly. It's, it, I mean, people get ring, you know, it's like <laughs> foot fungus. Well, I'm, I'm no fan of Fox News, but they are right. Uh, ringworm is a fungus, which is easily cured. It's hardly a major health epidemic. Now, are there areas in the health system in America that can be improved? Fuck yes. Yes, there are many areas that need major improvement. And if you point at those areas out, you know, that would be a better argument than, uh, than bringing up ringworm which is a fungus, which is easily treated. But I don't see how this is an issue caused by billionaires. Now, for the record, I think billionaires should be taxed. I'm, I'm not one of those people who think that tax is theft. We live in a, a community where we have shared resources like roads and uh, fire departments and police forces and education and things like that. And we should all put in our fair share. And if you have a billion dollars, then yes, you also should put in your fair share. And that means not hiding your money various ways or finding all the legal loopholes which you can to get out of actually paying any tax. That's bullshit. Millionaires, billionaires and everyone else should pay their fair share. And yes, some of that money should be spent on health care. I agree with all of that. My problem is saying that billionaires shouldn't exist at all or somehow they don't deserve to exist. Now, if you've invented something or you've come up with a, the next uh, Facebook or whatever and that makes you a billion dollars, good on you, I say. Once again, I, I'm still saying you should pay tax. I'm not saying you should be tax-free. But if you actually earn that money... Good on you. Well done. You've done that one thing that most people in the world would love to do. I'm guessing including Hassan Piker.
All around the world, you see tensions rising. In the absence of class consciousness or an actual alternative to capitalism, we see people railing against more tangible targets, immigrants and refugees, or brown people, or even intangible concepts like globalism, which is the system that's bringing brown people to our borders. Um, Hassan, I, I hate to tell you this, but the reason why those brown people are going to your borders is because America is a capitalist country. In fact, I suspect that's why your parents went there in the first place. Now, if America was a communist country and had an economic system uh, like you would like, uh, people would be flowing in the opposite direction. They, they would be fleeing to Mexico, because that would be the better option of the two. It's amazing that you don't realize this. Is there a migrant crisis? Sure. But the solution isn't to shut off borders and get increasingly more violent with their maintenance. The solution is to solve inequality, to solve famine, to solve poverty, and all the issues that come along with it on a global scale. Techn uh, on a global scale, you say, Hassan. Well, uh, you, you've really got your work cut out for you, don't you? I, I guess you really have to come up with a, a good hashtag to, uh, to get that done. Yeah. Technological advancements have rendered globalism an unstoppable force, so we have to adapt to it. One immediate way of doing that is through drastic wealth redistribution, and that starts with banning billionaires. Part of banning billionaires. Okay, so let's say that uh, in, in my spare time over the last 10 years, I've been working away in my garage on a new type of microchip, and this microchip will cost half as much to produce but it's 10 times faster. I then go to the bank and I get a bank loan and I start a business and I, I start hiring people and I pay money to a factory to, to start pumping out computers. And after a, a shit ton of hard work, I finally have my new laptop on the market and it's cheaper than any other laptop and a whole lot faster. And overnight, I corner the laptop business. People are throwing out their old laptops because they're now too slow and they're buying this cheap one which is far superior. And over a couple of years I earned billions of dollars. Are you saying that I don't deserve that money? Are you saying that it should be taken off me? Now, I, I do agree I should pay a reasonable amount of tax. That goes without saying. But do you think someone should come along, the government should come along and just Keep taking money from me until I am under a certain limit, as opposed to taxing me a, a certain percentage. I don't know, Hassan, that doesn't really seem fair, does it? I mean, if I knew the government was going to do that, I might head overseas and uh, live in another country that doesn't do that. And then that way America wouldn't be getting any of that tax money from me, nor would I be buying things in America point of having a society, of having government, is to promote the general welfare. Welfare, it, it's literally right there in the, in the preamble of the Constitution. Yet for some reason, we've been propagandized into believing that the purpose of the government is to clear the path for individuals to acquire and hoard ungodly amounts of wealth, regardless of the consequences to the rest of us, or the health of the society as a whole. And now, do the rich often get out of paying their fair share of tax due to loop loopholes and and other things and uh, yes you, you are right that that does happen and that's a conversation we can have if you want to talk about tightening up those loopholes and how the government shouldn't be making it easier for the extreme rich to avoid paying their fair share of tax that's fine we can have that conversation I'm likely to agree with you on most of it but you're taking it a step further you're saying that these people don't deserve their money even if they pay their fair share of tax. That the government should still come in and take more from them until they're under a certain amount of money. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that limit is, by the way. You never clearly state it. But that is where you go way too far. If someone is paying their fair amount of tax, that's it. 
the rest of their money should be theirs and they should be able to do whatever they want with it. And that includes giving it to charities and hospitals, which is something that a lot of rich people actually do, by the way, Hassan. Not all of them, but, you know, um, there are some who do that and they probably deserve a bit of credit from someone like you, considering you're so concerned about outbreaks of ringworm. Now, people all around the world are waking up. They're coming to the realization that this is no way to run a society. And perhaps that's why billionaire is becoming a bad word. And look, this may scare you, but a more equitable distribution of wealth is coming, whether it's by policy or pitchforks. Uh, yes, and, and that worked out really well for Russia, didn't it? So it's up to you guys. Which one is it going to be? Now, I find Hassan rather fascinating. He seems to be unaware of the financial risk or the, the amount of work that people put in to build a business. And he seems to think that employers and employees should be exactly the same, despite the fact that one has financial risk and responsibility and the other one doesn't. So I have to ask, what incentive would there be to start a business under Hassan's version of economics? Why would I get a bank loan and go through all the paperwork and all the hassle and all the risk of starting a business when I could just turn up to my normal job, do my seven and a half hours, go home and get paid the exact same amount I would if I started a business? Where's the incentive for me to do more, to take the risk? There isn't any. And if people aren't willing to take that risk and start businesses, in particular small businesses, then people aren't going to be employed, are they? Starting your own business is not an easy thing. And if after a lot of hard work someone strikes it rich, good on them, I say. Once again, let me stress, though, that I think everyone should pay their fair share of tax, including millionaires and billionaires. And some of that tax money should be spent on looking after the poor. I'd like to see more done for the homeless. It's one of the issues I bring up quite often in my videos. I suspect that one of the reasons we don't give a shit about the homeless, generally speaking, is because the majority of them are male. And yes, the health system can improve, in particular in America. And the poor should have their health care taken care of, particularly children. I agree with all of that. The one thing I don't agree with, though, is taking away all the wealth from the wealthy, in particular those who have worked fucking hard to earn it, and then just spreading it evenly out amongst the, uh, the masses. Now, I think it was a year or two ago I, I did a video on a similar topic. Um, it was about a, a conversation I'd had years ago with a former student of mine, and he told me that there's enough money in the world for everyone to be a millionaire, which is just nonsense. He, he didn't understand either that if everyone had a million dollars, then a million dollars would not be worth a million dollars anymore. And I brought up to him that even if a million dollars was still worth a million dollars and everyone in the world was a millionaire, which is nonsense, but for the sake of argument, let's say that did actually happen. You'd still have a situation where some people would invest their money wisely and make more money, and some people would waste it. You know, maybe someone would fly to Vegas every weekend on a private plane and stay at the best hotel and eat the best foods and, and blow it on cocaine and hookers, as well as making stupid bets at the roulette table. And in a year, they'd be broke again. So over a period of time, you'd still have people being rich and people being poor. What do you do in that situation? Do you, do you then take the money away from the rich again, even though that person's been a smart investor and has made their money work for them and, and put in the time and effort and the other person's wasted it? Now, for the record, I'm not saying that everyone who's poor has uh, wasted it on cocaine and hookers or, or anything like that. There are a lot of people who are born into poverty and find it very hard to get out of. I, I fully understand that. And I'm totally in favour of helping them and giving them the opportunity to, to get themselves out of that. And one, one way is education. But Hassan's ideal of this equal society where everyone has an equal cut of the pie is just not reality. 
it wouldn't work. Uh, people would still fuck it up somehow. And it would take away all incentive to do better and to, to start a business and to, you know, try to earn more. What would be the point? And that's not even going into corruption in the, in the government, as we saw in the Soviet Union. But, you know, that's, that's a whole different video. I will link below, though, that video I did a, a year or two years ago where I had that conversation with her. If you haven't seen it, you might want to have a look at it. It's quite interesting. Uh, but that's about it for now. So until next time, take it easy, folks. Can, I, yes, can we just play a, can, a thought yeah. experiment? Okay. Let's say that you make 15 loaves of bread, okay? You're making 15 loaves of bread. Then you hire someone, and that person also has the capacity to make bread, and uh, together you guys start making 20 loaves of bread, uh, and, and you're like, well, okay, I'm gonna take 15 loaves of bread for myself and give this person five loaves of bread as a, a payment, okay? So now your, your output is 20 loaves of bread. Amazing. 15 loaves of bread. And the other person is getting five loaves of bread while you're getting 15 still. You can pay the other, uh, the, the original employee, three loaves of bread because you can pay the undocumented person two loaves of bread. Amazing. 15 loaves of bread. Uh, and, and you're like, well, okay, I'm gonna take 15 loaves of bread for myself and give this person five loaves of bread. So let's say now, um, because of that, 15 loaves of bread. Amazing. Because of, there's an additional person, now 15 loaves of bread. Amazing. King 20 loaves of bread. Because the undocumented person doesn't have all of the rights that a, uh, that a legal citizen would have. Amazing. So you can justify paying them less. And then you can justify paying less to your original employee 15 loaves of bread. Amazing. Uh, and, and you're like, well, okay, I'm going to take 15 loaves of bread for myself and give this person five loaves of bread. Because there are plenty of people who could take their job, right? You're like, well, you know what? If you want to keep, uh, keep at least any loaves of bread and, and, and feed your family, you're going to have to take less money now, okay? You're making 15 loaves of bread, okay? Now, you look at that and you say, hold on, making 20 loaves of bread. Amazing. Why don't we, uh, why don't we just, uh, 15 loaves of bread. Uh, the, the boss still gets 15 loaves of bread because I was getting five last year and that was better than three. And you're right, that is better. Five loaves of bread is better than three.